Hi everyone, my name is Matt Moses, and this is Interesting Times. And this is Gideon Evans, Matt's trusty co-host. Yes, here we are together. Uh, Gideon and I know each other uh, from way back when we worked at The Daily Show a long, long time ago. But we also know each other because we went to the same high school, although we went there at different times. So and we uh, have... UCB, too. Uh, oh, that's also true. Like we, improv comedy and stuff. Right. Just to we, g- give you all uh, background about who we are. And and we just uh, figured it would be... Because these are truly interesting times, we thought it would be fun to kind of tackle one issue, one clip, per episode yes and so this week uh we're going to be talking about a clip uh from the supreme court uh when they heard a case this week about social media and specifically raises the questions the question about how much can the government do in terms of its relationship with social media specifically are they able to reach out to the social media companies if they see that misinformation is spreading and say, hey, we see this, you know, COVID misinformation spreading. Can you take that down? And some people say that the government shouldn't be allowed to do that because it can be construed as uh, pressure or as coercion, which certainly would be a violation of the First Amendment. Uh, I mean, maybe not even certainly, but... Uh, could definitely look like it. And then some people say, oh, they were just reaching out to the company. They weren't, there was no coercion. The company is still a private company and they get to decide what they publish. And is like the com- the common good more important than free speech? Yeah, good point. A lot, a lot of issues at play. Is that kind of what this clip says? Uh, um, that like, yeah, free I think- speech in a way can, be, <laughs> can present certain problems. Yeah, it's it's Justice uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson, who is, is, oh, that's good, KBJ, who is questioning um, the, I guess they actually are the defense in this case. Are they, does that how it works in this case? Are they plaintiffs and defense? They, I don't even know if they call them that in the yeah. Supreme Court, but it's the, uh, yeah, Litigant. It's, it's the lawyer from the, from the state. From right. yeah, from, uh, from the state that's that's basically uh, wants to, you know, wants that's to suing make, the federal government exactly uh, and right. saying that it's it's improper. Uh, so either from Louisiana or Missouri, I think this guy's from Missouri. But let's cool. play it. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. But I think there that you have to admit that there are certain circumstances in which the government can uh, provide information, encourage the platforms to take it down. Um, Tell them to take it down. Um, Suppose someone started posting about a new teen challenge that involved um, teens jumping out of windows at increasing elevations. This is the challenge. And kids all over the country start doing this. There is an epidemic. Children are seriously injuring or even killing themselves in situations. Is it your view that the government authorities could not declare those circumstances a public emergency and encourage social media platforms to take down the information that is instigating this problem? Your Honor, the government absolutely can use the pulpit to say publicly, here's what we recognize to be a public health issue, uh, emergency. This is obviously extremely terrible, and the public shouldn't tolerate this. Platforms, we see it's going on on the platforms. But they can't call the platforms and say, listen, we really think you should be taking this down because look at the problems that it's causing. If it's protected speech, Your Honor, then I think we get closer. But, like, look, if, if you think that that's, if that's clearly the way you're asking the question, I, I understand that the instinct that that may, you know, may not be a First Amendment issue. I guess what I fall back on, Your Honor, is that at least where the government itself, there is no emergency like this. There's nothing. Um, no, I, my hypothetical is there is an emergency. My hypothetical is that there is an emergency, and I guess I'm asking you, in that circumstance, can the government call the platforms and say, this information that you are putting up on your platform is creating a serious public health emergency. We are encouraging you to take it down. 
I, I was with you right until that last comment, Your Honor. I think they absolutely can call and say, this is a problem. It's going rampant on your platforms. But the moment that the government tries to use its ability um, as the government and its stature as the government to pressure them to take it down, that is when you're interfering with third-party speech rights. Well, it's an interesting, uh, it's actually a pretty kind of realistic uh, hypothetical. You could kind of see something happening, like the teens jumping from windows. I know. What I was thinking was, I hope no teens are listening to SCOTUS right now because they <laughs> might, they might get ideas. I think that's it's a lot more damaging than the Tide. What's the Tide Pod? Oh God, yeah. And the then tide there was pod. the cinnamon one. Oh, well, that, what was that? Oh, that was just remember inhaling. People, yeah. Well, people put a big, uh, got a big tablespoon of cinnamon, yeah. and they had to like eat it and then hold their breath and they always ended up coughing and there was like a giant cloud of uh, cinnamon that came out but nothing bad happened right to them other than coughing well the tide pod thing was pretty bad that was worse than cinnamon that's true uh, you know i'm sorry but this is making me think of um this clip that floated around at the daily show it actually might have been broadcast now that i think of it but gideon uh was doing a field shoot and they, they were into a uh some kind of fair with all these uh types of really spicy peppers and uh i forget who the correspondent was but the correspondent was like i'm not trying the most the steve, spiciest pepper steve Carell. steve yeah. Carell was like i'm not doing it and good for him but uh gideon said okay gideon's the producer gideon said okay i'll do it and so he does it and it just it just doesn't look good it just it looks like you're dying yeah, it was really powerful. This was way before that game, that talk show, Hot Ones. <gasps> right. Because now that guy basically stole my thunder. He really did. But I don't think anyone on that show ever goes to the level that you did. Because you they know, wouldn't they speak might afterwards. Have, they, might, they might actually have used that very hot sauce. But I think people just go on that. People must go on that show doing certain things. Right, knowing they're gonna eat really hot sauce. What do you know do? What you could maybe you could eat like a lot of yogurt or something uh, that like lines your stomach. Yeah, but what's your point about the stuff? This hot sauce? It's just because it's like kind of dangerous. The Tide Tide Pod. Oh, I'm, I guess yeah, I was just thinking about uh, stunts. You know, people what? doing people doing oh, stunts. stupid stunts. Right. Well, and, those jackass. Right. Right. Um, where they drop stuff on their genitalia. Well, that's, uh, I mean, it's so interesting. I mean, one thing that I was like, I looked at a few videos with smart people talking about this issue of like, can the government go in and tell social media companies to take stuff down? And some of the people, like the smart people were like, there's a huge difference between like offensive content and dangerous content and uh, or right. harmful, not dangerous. I'm sorry. Harmful content. I mean, yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I, I think uh, one of the rubrics they use to determine whether it's free, whether it's permissible under the first amendment is whether you're uh, inciting immediate violence. Like you right. can even speak in favor of violence, right? But you can't say, "Hey, everybody in Times Square, let's start violence now." Like that would be illegal, right? Well, that's yeah. That's partly why that whole January sixth thing, like the language Trump uses, is pretty like vague. He's right. I, I always fight. thought that they're not going to get him on that. I always thought no. like, okay, let's forget about January 6th. That's almost a sideshow and focus in on, uh, what, what, what was it? The, the, uh, the false electors. electors like that, yeah. uh, that, to me, that was always like, what, why aren't we talking about that? That's insane. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're getting a lot. That's another, topic. that's another episode. Yeah. But anyway, so there's this difference between offensive content and harmful content. And within harmful content, there's legal harmful content and illegal harmful content. This oh. is just what I saw. I mean, well, I think because there's so many people on social media and there's only so many people working for the companies to try to take down harmful stuff. Yeah. You probably have to decide, like, 
what's the stuff to prioritize? And it's like, like everybody claims that like girls looking at pictures of really thin girls can give them anorexia, right? Or right. like make them feel bad about themselves. But that's not illegal as bad as it is. Right. So, yeah. But then like pedophilia and like child porn, I hate and we're already in some really, you know, this yeah. is such a complicated issue, but that's like illegal. So it's yes. like don't we want and then like ISIS like finding other, you know, terrorist groups finding people to join their terrorist group, that's probably illegal too, I would think. I would think, but you know, ISIS has posted these sort of, uh, I don't know, just horrific murders and stuff. Right. And I don't know if that, I guess, I, well, who would be in trouble for it? It would be, I guess it would be the, the platform that is essentially right. publishing it. But I, I don't, I don't know if they can actually get legally in trouble for publishing something that is like outrageously violent content. I don't know where the line is. There. Well, when you sign up for all these sites like Facebook, when you right. start an account, you're signing up for, they show you this thing. That's like terms of service, right? Yeah. And they're like, here's what you cannot do on this yeah. site. And if you do it, you can get thrown off the site, right? Right, right. So Facebook is obviously going to be, you know, a lot more restrictive than others. But I, than others, I, like, I just, what's the restriction? Like what? Like what others? Well, like, I don't know. Just uh, 4chan. Like, can, right. they, can they just publish whatever they want uh, beyond like, a sort of, you know, child pornography? Uh, I and, think... I'm trying to think what else would be. Well, I think this is a really good point because I feel like what makes something harmful is sometimes about the scale of it. It's not mm -hmm. even about what the thing is because yeah. like there have always been lunatics and Nazis and there was right. always that, that thing about like, remember Stormfront? There was like, an independent paper that was basically right. a Nazi paper in America. Yes. And, but it was only read by like fringy people. Right. So even though that existed and people knew it existed, it's like nobody but, felt super threatened by it, but because it's like Facebook is so big. Right. That's when people start feeling threatened. And I feel like 4chan is like pretty big, but it's small enough where people aren't quite freaked out. But maybe they should be more freaked out. I yeah, I don't I don't know who like actually um you know pays for the server or sells the server space or you know, the platform uh to them. But I think with uh Stormfront you said? Yeah. That, okay, I keep thinking of the Billy Joel album. <laughs> right. Very different. The Down Easter Alexa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, very, very different. Is that sure why that, they, maybe that's why they named it that. I'm sure the Stormfront people would not approve of Billy Joel. You, pro you know what? I think you're right. Although they might just misunderstand him. They're very good at doing stuff like that. Uh, like how they like uh, Bruce Springsteen or something. It's like they don't actually listen to the lyrics about how, how <laughs> right, he cares about exactly. working people and stuff. Exactly. Uh, but I think with Stormfront, I think they were eventually shut down because the people that enabled them to publish their just their website said, like, no, we won't allow you to host it. We won't host it. I see. There's but always... is there, there's got to be a host out there that's just like whatever Stormfront goes. Stormfront was like a paper magazine for a while. I mean, maybe that happened when it became... Right. A website. I mean, that's why the whole technology thing through it, like everything gets so complicated. Like I went to an exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum. <clears throat> nice. Now I'm, I'm clearing my throat. Mm. That was about zines through the uh. ages. And it had like, it had a really cool collection of like all these like subversive zines that various people and political people so cool. uh, created and put out over the decades and it's like they put anything they want on the cover like it was always like super offensive and super like subversive yeah. but like because the circulation was small People i think it, like net, the internet like 
really level the playing field to some degree. So people like the people that were doing those zines could then do like blogs and then, mm. then Facebook came along and they could post on Facebook. Uh, and then all these like algorithms, like bring these people together with these like subversive views and it becomes a yeah. so, uh, amount of people. You were talking about, uh, like harmful versus offensive and then the two different types of harmful is there like what's can you do you remember anything else about that i wish i i wish i could i think sorry you know, i didn't mean to put you on no on the spot no with that. not I'm at just all curious. i definitely i think we could kind of talk it through i mean i think i just think sometimes all these things that people want taken down can be lumped together and right. uh I think the reason why certain advocacy groups group these things is because you you there has to kind of be triage because yeah. it's such a big problem and it's such a big platform and it's like lots of people want hate speech like people that are just like asshole racists yeah. taken off and that's completely legitimate if that's what you want but is that is that what you want rather than, you know, people that are kind of trying, like Russians trying to rig the election? Like, it seems like, it seems like because Russians trying to rig the election is possibly illegal, maybe that is the easiest thing to tackle than just like random racist Yeah, because I think, you know, in terms of harmful to me, it'll come down to what is going to have a real world sort of physical effect. Right. Uh, although, it's you know, changing an election certainly can have a physical effect too. So it's it's hard to know if that is. But I was just reading an article in the paper today about uh, trouble with a lot of misinformation about birth control and all the stuff on TikTok and other platforms, basically uh, highlighting these really rare side effects of birth control and then people are going off it. Um, and also other stuff they say that is just blatantly not true. So anyway, it's making a ton of people stop taking birth control and then uh, they're getting uh, pregnant when they don't want to uh, because they're also selling them on different methods of birth control like uh, the rhythm method or something like that, um, which you know is not nearly as effective as prescription birth control or even condoms i don't think so uh and they say that there it some of this is does have um sort of those uh, abortion hater people uh, that uh, are against birth control as well like the extreme you know the far right christians they don't just hate um abortion they hate birth control uh, which is w always wild to me. I was like, uh, it's always to me is like, well, if you really hate abortion that much, if you really truly believe it's all murder, why aren't you out there just handing out birth control to everyone? And, and, you know, I, I, anyway. Yeah. But I think this birth control like thing, if there are people kind of giving false information, I do think that would be a good example of like harmful, I mean, but the legality of it is probably, like, a little hazy, right? These people aren't, like, pretending to be doctors, right? No, but they are pretending to be experts. But that's interesting if, like, if misrepresenting that's, your expertise, if yeah, there's something to that. Yeah, maybe that's legal because I think in a way that's like, Amer that's, like, the American dream is pretending you're an expert in something. Right. People start following you. There's so many people. I know. Yeah. But I think there are so many people in our country that achieve things that have that really they don't have the credential credentials. Right. I don't know. But then again, and then it comes back to like how important are credentials? But it depends. Yeah, sometimes very important, and sometimes like oh, you might just be very well read and have real life experiences that make you an expert. Well, for medical. For medical advice, I think credentials is really important. And I think I think also, even apart from the medical knowledge you learn at medical school, they teach you about, like, how do you explain this to patients in a really, like, rational, calm way? Right. That's super clear. Like, I think the problem with those videos 
the TikTok videos about birth control is that these people like are hysterical. Even if their voice is gone, they like hmm. they're creating fear, right? right For no right. reason. Like I think there's a way to talk about the side effects of some medication in a way that like where you sound neutral. Right. But if, if you're advocating people not taking birth control, you can really manipulate things into, right. you know, changing the, the, the choices of words you make. Like, Well, and everybody's going to be led to speak that way if they want, uh, if they want engagement, because if you hear somebody speaking with right. passion and, oh, telling you uh, there's something bad in your life that's giving you good news, good, bad news, you're gonna be like, oh. Let me pay attention because we always want to know bad well, news. Also, we want to know get, good. You won't get viewers if you're too calm and rational. I mean, it's the Alex Jones school of like getting a lot of fans, of freaking so. out, and people have to pay attention. Yeah, so I, I don't know what the answer is to that, though. I mean, because you're totally right. People just should not take uh, health advice from people without any expertise. No question. I, I think the internet and Facebook and TikTok. I think it's very easy to like mistake fake shit for real shit and like yeah. to not be able to differentiate people who know what they're talking about with people who are complete lunatics. No, no. We, what, what, so we'll, about this Supreme Court thing, um, <laughs> you hear my dog? No, no. Oh, good. So about this Supreme Court thing. So, I think they were skeptical, right? They haven't decided the case. Yeah, I think they were ultimately skeptical, and it sounds like they're going to say that it's okay for the government to reach out to social media companies and say, hey, this is going on. But uh, Alito, is I said this. Is that good? Other- uh, oh, I'm t- sorry. Uh, well, I think, yeah, kind of. At least, like, I, I don't want the government to be able to control social media companies. Uh, that's another question, you know. But um, at least be able to reach out to them and say, hey, can you not publish this public health information that is killing people? Uh, that seems like a power the government should have to but at like- least be able to tell them, maybe not to compel them. But I, I maybe they should have the power to compel them as well. But certainly they should have the power and the ability to call. But to t- play devil's advocate, say Trump gets reelected. Yeah. Remember Trump was like all about that hydrochloroquine? Remember yes. that? Right. The thing that was like disproven pretty early on to be able to help COVID. Yeah. But he was obsessed with it. Uh, and my late mother like was like kind of in the tank for Trump, yeah, at the time, and she got into all this hydrochloroquine stuff, yeah, so crazy, anyway, so say he's president, you know in twenty twenty four God forbid, and then he uh someone writes another article about hydrochloroquine like there's n- there's another pandemic again god forbid and then he calls facebook and somebody writes an article saying hydrochloroquine doesn't work and then trump wants to or 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 says they do it does work i don't know i don't even know what i'm talking about but you (laughs) know okay so well because if he was reaching out are you okay with him like like telling social media companies to take things down uh so i guess he would be telling social media companies to take down stuff that says hydrochloroquine sucks. Sucks. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's an interesting question. That's the well. Problem. That's why I want it, I I I want some of the public oversight of this. So at least the social media companies have some oversight over this. Uh, but and do you maybe trust our the corporations, cons- right? Well, I don't necessarily would say I trust them, but they at the very least have an interest in not getting sued or you know not they won't get harming sued. their um, their customers. But these guys won't get sued, right? Because of that, uh, what's it called? Section two thirty. 
Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. So it's really crazy. It's such a complicated, crazy thing. Right. I mean, it's not like I trust corporations, but at least there's at least there's another lever in there of decision making happening. But then there's the question that. Uh, but I. Uh, so I do think corporations can be a benefit in terms of democracy. But I also think the problem is they get too big, and then the, the power is too concentrated, and then they aren't a benefit anymore because they're not balancing everything out. They have all the power. Anyway, ev- everything to- they do is basically for their bottom line, too. Right. So if they benefit from articles on their platform talking about how hydrochloroquine is really great, right. they'll probably want to allow that until the government tells them to take it off. You're probably right. You're so... Probably- uh, and then... And that, I mean, it all gets a little depressing because another thing I was hearing on the piece that I watched about this topic was, you know, there can be rules put forth in the terms of service about what you're not allowed to post. Right. And say you're not allowed to post violence, which makes sense. It seems like that's a logical thing to ban from the platforms, but but you know these these social media companies are all over the world. So say there's like Vladimir Putin's like I'm going to kill a thousand people, and then the people he's killing try to videotape it to expose him, and then he's right. like, "Up, oh, Facebook says I I'm, you shouldn't be putting violence on the platform." Yeah. So any ban you do is going to like cut in a negative way and maybe a positive way in some ways. So it's just like maybe social media isn't even worth it. Maybe it's just like just not even a good thing. Maybe it Yeah, it, does, it gets so thorny. I, I was wondering like when Trump had been uh, accused of all these crimes, like could somebody go on a social media platform and say, you know, I think Trump should be executed for these crimes because, you know, the, so, the uh, Secret Service is like, no, you can't say anything like that. But then if you're advocating for a judicial outcome and sentencing, uh, I don't, is that illegal i don't i don't know i, I just I, can i just sensitive. add context here is like yeah. i definitely do, i want trump to like rot in prison i would never want him to get the death penalty oh, also like, against the death penalty in general but right but natural causes i mean oh god yeah like keep him <laughs> alive please yeah. no no i'm saying if there's like some like event that's out of any of our control yeah Anyway, we don't want to get there. We don't want to necessarily go there. But I do have, I remember when I was at at school in college, I had this professor, Professor Orzek. He was super nice. I think he was a humanities teacher. Anyway, he was home one night watching the news, and I think he had a couple of drinks, (laughs) and he watched something. It was like the years of George W. Bush. That's how old I am. Anyway, he after he watched the news story, he called the White House. He was like, can I speak to President Bush? And they were like, nope. And he was like, well, just tell him he's a fascist asshole, something like that. And the next morning, the Secret Service came to his house. Isn't that crazy? Is that all he really said, though? No. I mean, who knows? That was yeah. his... But it could have been, and it's probably not illegal for the secret service to drop by just to see no it's not like they're they're like searching his apartment they they could have just been like is this someone we need to keep an eye on right like if he comes to philadelphia or whatever right yeah i mean i guess right yeah but i also off that story i kind of do think the uh, i mean the phone the phones used to have like codes right of where you couldn't say certain things on the telephones is that true i think it is true back in the day like way back like see this is actually something that came up in another case uh recently where they were talking about it are we going to look at social media company companies as publishers or are we going to look at as common carriers because now you can say whatever you want basically on the telephone and the telephone company uh, doesn't have to like edit your speech or anything like that. They have no editorial say over that. But uh, 
you know, if we look at the social media companies as uh, publishers, then they have like editorial control about what is actually put forth on their sites. Right. And this section 230, which we kind of yeah. brought up briefly before, it was part of a communications bill that Bill Clinton signed. Yeah, yeah. That basically said that social media is not a publisher. So that that pretty much gave them a pass saying that like if if your users post some crazy slanderous stuff, you're not going to be sued because it's not like you're directly responsible for that stuff going on your platform. Right. But you but are maybe, still maybe, allowed to have some editorial control. Like you are allowed to decide what totally. you publish and don't publish still. But that like was that happened in the late nineties when these companies didn't have enough people yeah. to surveil their users. And now these companies are multi million, multi billion dollar companies. So maybe they maybe things should change. Maybe they should rewrite that's section 230. I don't know. Well, I don't know, because I, I think uh, the problem with that, because that's what they were, uh, the case was about. Uh, the problem with that is it would still be so hard to decide what is and isn't allowed uh, that basically they would just end up saying nothing is allowed and only like puppies. Who's they? The, company? uh, the, the companies would have to be overly restrictive you think but don't they make money by allowing a lot of crazy stuff on there uh that's true but if they could get sued for it then they would lose a lot of money and i think that was the specific law that was uh i think it was in texas and maybe another state as well that they made it possible for uh citizens to sue the platforms if they published something that uh, I don't remember. It was a specific... Right. I mean, I wasn't saying that you should get rid of Section 230, but maybe there's a way to rewrite it. Yeah. That basically says, like, if there's terrorists that, like, organize on your platform and somebody warned you about it, and this right. happens, like, three times then you are responsible that maybe there's just like the bar gets kind of raised a little bit for the that's reasonable CEOs. right but then who's determining who's a terrorist too because then right. china is telling you or i don't know well, a that's, smaller country with a repressive regime is telling you that they're terrorists right. and you're like they'll well say, they'll say taiwan is the taiwan liberate liberation right. people you know democracy people are terrorists yeah and, Exactly. That's the problem. Well, they did on this program I watched. They they basically said, could the whole world get together and figure out what should be allowed and what shouldn't? And the expert was kind of like, mm, no, because of because of all these autocratic countries, yeah. you don't want to like water everything down just just to help out those those dictators. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I just to go back to that. What I was saying either earlier. I think it was just sort of a matter of trying to make sure that the uh, social media companies weren't um, sort of editing out political voices that maybe they didn't like. Um, uh, but then that again, it goes back to that. What it becomes a question of like, well, if somebody is advocating for violence, that is definitely a political issue so that might go against the terms of service so hey it's look it's the right wing who's the people who are all advocating for violence right so they're going to be the ones who are getting cut from the platform and angry about it um so that was sort of the issue and then if people could end up uh suing them for uh cutting them you know uh, canceling them or cutting down their posts or something uh it would get very complicated because then they would just be like okay no political stuff at all right and that goes that 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 brings up this whole idea of like is social media the public square you know quote unquote yeah like is that a thing do we all agree that this is even though it's private and it's a corporation right that it's like 
there's something really precious about this corporate public. There's something really precious about this corporate public square. Is yeah. that really something we need to preserve? Like when you, when we work on a TV show, we know that our bosses are going to not let us say certain things that are too out there. Oh yeah, because it's super clear. You're we're working for Disney or we're working yeah. for some, you know, Paramount. Right. Well, everybody got at least I noticed this uh, after Nipplegate. Remember at the um, yes. at the Super, the Super Bowl? Bowl, Justin Timberlake and Janet people Jackson flipped out, and it was uh, you know, a and felt the, malfunction. Right. Uh, just the repercussions from that, I think, were kind of like, and you know, Kitty and I were in comedy TV, so it was just like, uh, you can't do that, you can't do that because it might be offensive to someone. They were so and they scared. did. There were court cases, I think, that w- that talked about what if it's like an accident? Do the networks get fined? Yeah. Um, anyway, so there will be. It looks like we're moving towards a structure of like rules and fines where it will it will ultimately get regulated more. Right? We're we're in agreement there. Uh, that it will. Uh, yeah, that I- social media will there. It just seems like things are moving in that direction. You know? I guess, but it just depends on like even that law I was just talking about that Texas was doing. It was only, it would only affect uh, platforms with a very high number of users. So it was really targeting the big ones. You know, so then like say Trump's platform wouldn't get targeted. The small, the small uh, one. Right. Right. Uh, but there's so many – some of these court cases are different depending on what country you go to. Yeah. And I've, like, read some countries are going to, like, impose these, like, million-dollar fines. And, like, even, like, in Australia, they may, like, jail certain tech titans if they refuse you know, I, to crack down. So I wonder, um, I wonder too, if that these um, – it's going to be cheaper and cheaper to – uh, make these kinds of platforms and uh, people with less know-how will be able to create these things and you know as, as computer infrastructure gets cheaper and cheaper uh, is it going to be possible to have more decentralized things or more just smaller companies that can host you know millions of people easily because I, I don't I don't know that I don't know. It would be wild to shut down the internet. It's kind of hard to to really control it. You know, maybe, maybe the big. You know, you might be able to keep, you know, Broadway clean, but you go over to Tenth Avenue, it's still gonna be a little crusty over there. Well, Definitely. maybe these days it's more like Twelfth Avenue. I, I think it's a fair it's a fair metaphor there, and I I do agree that there's like the the more the marketplace kind of gets more crowded and people innovate with different types of technology that. Uh, that it might become more and more decentralized and uh and facebook and these guys might fall victim to like stuff that like andrew carnegie like was uh subject to in terms of yeah. like breaking up monopolies it does seem like well oh, there's the, like, in the news today really is like a yeah. giant monopoly that they, they probably need to break up yeah, well, <clears throat> this, I, I actually, I think sometimes uh, I talk to people, I might sound like kind of pro-business, but the thing is, I am somewhat pro-capitalist, but yeah. I also think we need to actually use capitalism for what it's good for and and break up these big businesses and allow competition, which is what it is good for. Well, but right. the, 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 I mean, that's how they say, I think Mark said, like how capitalism has the the seeds of its own destruction are built into it, right? Because the wealth will keep on accumulating, and I, he's a hundred percent right. Um, well, capitalism only works if it's like regulated fairly. Exactly, well. exactly. And I, you know, I used to work with Michael Moore, yeah, who a lot of people don't like, but he he had he had a lot of good uh, good things about capitalism that he said, uh, kind of pointing out the problems. And it is true, like when. When these companies merge and there are many, many companies become very few companies and you just have very few choices and no competition, yeah. it really does become kind of like communism. And you think it's capitalism. Exactly. But it's like if you only have two airplane companies and yes. two media 
companies, that's like what they had in communist Russia, where you, there were <laughs> yes. two channels. That was the joke, Yakov Smirnov. He was oh. like, there are two channels. One <laughs> that was the government-owned channel, and then the other one telling you to watch the other channel. <laughs> I think that was his joke. <laughs> Sounds like a uh, Yakov Smirnov joke. That's great. It does. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I, look, I 100% agree with you. I'm so glad to, yeah, that, that you get exactly what I'm saying. It's like, totally. no, you people that are so all these people online were so enraged about the um, the striking uh, auto workers. Like, how dare they? And it's like, who are you? Are you do you run one of these billion dollar companies? Like, let these people use what little power they have. Like, well, and also, then people are also yeah. mad about this uh, that Apple is being hit with an antitrust lawsuit. I'm like, look, even if you love Apple, this is good for consumers. Apple's gonna be fine. This is not what's yeah. gonna kill Apple. Like they may and screw up on AI, the, but this is if, not it. If, if the workers, if the auto workers get paid more, they'll have more money to spend. They'll buy cars and help the car industry by exactly. buying their car. If nobody, if no workers have money, they're not going to like be able to participate in yeah. The capitalism. Yeah, is, but the thing is, I also get peeved at people though who are just so like, oh, it's all greed. It's all greed. Like, yeah, it's greed, but like. They're playing the game the way the game is to be played. I, I don't think we have to say to them, like, oh, be nice. No, we need, like, laws that control the game better, you know? Not just say, like, oh, they're so greedy. I don't know. Right. I mean, the best, the best systems are usually a mix of capitalism and some socialism, Absolutely. And, I mean, uh, I think that we should have more social. I also think that like most of the oil and energy sector should be nationalized. So, uh, if I if I sound like uh, like I'm yeah. I'm I'm really like right wing in any way, I'm, no, I'm not. No. Maybe not a hundred percent nationalized, but at least the oil that we get from uh, lands that the federal government still owns. Like we just basically give that away pretty cheaply to these oil companies, who then sell it back to us for a fat profit, and it's insane it is anyway. crazy and there are people always... come and it's all the people who complain about high gas prices or who complain about uh inflation and all these high and it's like but they don't want to break up companies like even like uh, all the high uh, uh uh you know food costs and you look at like the poultry market and like 50 percent of it is controlled by i think tyson and it's like oh, wow it's why do you yeah. think they're they're able to keep prices high totally i don't know well, yeah, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people blame Biden for inflation and maybe some of it's, you know, because of some of his policies, but really like a lot of corporations took advantage of the situation, especially when the pandemic was happening and they just jacked up their prices. Yeah, I, I still uh, like we talk about uh, uh uh, what's that called? Conspiracy theories. I do. Yeah. St- I, I'm a generally anti-conspiracy theory, but I do. I th- basically because I think they happen, but then uh, they come out relative, like eventually, kind of. And uh, but and generally, anything that involves like a lot of people is almost definitely not true. Because if a lot of people need to know something about something, like there's no way that hasn't come out. But uh, speaking of conspiracy theories, I do have that I just brought up, but I do have a theory that there may have been more price fixing going on in recent years. Some has been uncovered in the housing market, uh, where basically there was an app that different landlords could use to help determine what the price that they should charge. And so it wasn't like a direct collusion happening, but the app sort of helped them collude by telling them all to raise their prices at the same time. So it it stopped behaving sort of the way a rational market would behave. So I just wonder if there are other instances of things like that happening. Uh, Because that's, I mean, this is, that's the problem with, too much power in small business in one well, big corpse. And, and again, we get to AI, and that's that's always going to cause a lot of these conspiracy theories, and it yeah. might it might create situations where things happen and and that we're not aware of, but it's kind of happening beneath the scenes. I mean, some people were saying that AI might be a good solution for policing. 
the well, yeah. social media sites. Maybe if you tell AI you have to cut this type of content, uh, then then you don't need you know sixty thousand workers to. Watch I think everything. it's true. I mean, especially if they're able to understand it within context, which uh, it seems AI is pretty good at that. So it's not I just guess. like oh, they said the word murder, uh, right. you know. But, but they were, AI yeah. AI could be bias too and could be racist or yeah no question no question but so so would those workers you know that's true good point you know i think it's just looking at it and seeing if it's an endemic problem of the ai and then tweaking it in a way to make it not so i don't know so wow we've covered a lot of ground yeah Um, we really uh, sorry come to any did I think we basically covered this uh, Supreme Court case. I mean, it seems like they're going to um, they're going to decide not they're not worried about government butting in a little uh, bit. Yeah, I think uh, you know I think someone like Alito is still probably going to cast his idiot vote against yeah. it. But I think You're right. you know the other people who are more like okay, we can't like really. <laughs> not allow the government to do this because who knows what the heck could happen there. oh boy there's george i heard george maybe, that time maybe that's that's our sign that we should wrap things up okay but, uh, yes sorry george. george george has the final word <laughs> indeed <laughs> ai could never replace george the dog you know that about sums it up that got a laugh from my wife so. <laughs> uh anyway this has been a pleasure as always yes I'm, good to see I'm, you i'm glad you're feeling better you seem quite a bit better than last oh week. yeah oh good and, uh, uh i hope you stay healthy and i'll talk you. to you soon i will try talk to you soon okay bye-bye bye-bye bye everyone mm-hmm.